Well, good morning, dear saints. Great to see you again, October 15th today, as we start in our psalm again, Psalm 119, 33 through 40. And if you remember Psalm 119, it continually drives us back to learn, drives us back to God's Word where we grow and find our, our fulfillment and our nourishment. And then the Gospel reading is more about growing, Matthew 13, the parable of the sower. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth may declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, hear the psalmist for today as we begin. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things. And give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promises, that you may be feared. Turn away the reproach that I dread, for your just decrees are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. In your righteousness, give me life. What a great psalm, and and what it does is it drives us back again to God's word and his promises. It drives us back. What we hear is the law of God but it guides us back to those commandments, which remember the commandments, they continue to have a purpose. They show us our sin. They show us that we are sinners and they show us how far we can go. The curb, the mirror, and the guide, the third use of the law is that there is a savior. It guides us along the way that we hear the gospel, that we see the gospel and we live in it. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it, because the law of God is good. Well, let's jump into the gospel reading for today, Matthew chapter 13, the first 23 verses. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and a great crowd gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some of the seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, And the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Then the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to the one who has, more will be given." And, to he, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their case, they prophesy, indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. It says, You will indeed hear, but never understand. And you will indeed see, but never perceive. For the people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear, For truly I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see and did not see it, 
and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. That is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he who has yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what has been sown on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We can uh, look at this parable and we see a lot of things. Oftentimes what we do is we look at ourselves and, and we say, what kind of soil are we? And there is some truth in that because uh, as we look at the, the different kinds of soil, the word of God, the seed that the sower th- throws is good. And the seed grows and the seed produces because the seed is good. But where the seed is thrown, that doesn't always work quite as well. If it's thrown on the path and the birds come and steal it away, it doesn't have time to take root. If it's thrown in the shallow soil, it grows up quick. But then when the heat of the day, the pressure of the world comes, it's gone. If it's thrown among the weeds, they choke it out. But sometimes it's thrown in the good soil. And in the good soil, it takes root and grows and it produces fruit. Our Lord reminds us of that and reminds us of these things. The most important part of the parable, though, is not why Jesus said uh, the, which soil you are. The most important part of the parable is the sower. Now look at, look at the sower here. Jesus is the sower and the seed is the word of God. And where does he throw it? Just in the Christian church, just in the good soil where he knows it will produce a hundredfold? No, we would do that as farmers and gardeners. We don't plant the seeds all over and, and throw them in places where we, won't, we know they won't grow. We put them only in the good soil. Jesus is the generous sower. And he takes the word which he knows is good and he broadcasts it everywhere. And it looks like he doesn't care. It looks like he's sloppy. He's not. Because we don't know at what time the soil can turn and become something greater. Because it is the word of God that causes the change. How else is the bad soil going to be changed other than by the word of God? How else is the person who... uh, doesn't believe or maybe is struggling with faith or very marginally Christian, how else are they going to be strengthened in their faith but through hearing the word of God and the word of God doing the work to change them and to cause that growth, growth that produces fruit. That's the great joy we have in knowing that our Savior is generous as he sows. Everywhere he goes, he sows the word so that it might grow, so that the seed might take root and cause change and then grow in a way that produces wonderful fruit. So also that person can continue to do the same. What Jesus is teaching us here is the self-perpetuation of Christianity. Not that we perpetuate it, but we are, the, the word is the seed and the seed is thrown and it changes us And then we produce fruit. And as we produce fruit, we produce others, or we produce that fruit that helps others to hear the word. And it might be simply just by saying, come and see. Come and join me in worship as we gather. There is a profound mystery in the parable, and Isaiah talks about it, and Jesus does too. Uh, Sometimes people just won't hear. They have ears, but they won't hear. They have eyes, but they won't see. And the question is, why? Why 
why does God seem to block this from some of them? Well, that's a great question, dear saints, and not one that, that I have an answer to. In the Lord's wisdom, in the Lord's guidance, he lets the word work when and where he chooses. And at times, that word grows and produces wonderfully. Other times, it takes more seed through the years. It takes more hearing. But remember, in all of this, when it looks like God is, is causing some not to believe, that's not true. He is requiring that they believe through faith, which trusts in the word first and foremost. Many times when we trust in ourselves, the God that we are worshiping is me, not God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In God's wisdom, when he throws the seed, the seed is good and the seed does the work and the seed produces fruit. And in you, dear saints, in you, that seed today is growing through his word and I produce, that I, I expect, I hope, that you will produce fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, just to begin with a few of those. Let those shine in your world today because the word is the seed which has been planted in your world, which is growing, which is producing fruit so that others might see your love for the Savior and his love for them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When we look at uh, the petitions of the Lord's Prayer, it is the third petition that we come back to today. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does this mean? The good and gracious will of God is done even without our prayers. But we pray in this petition that it may be done among us also. How is God's will done? God's will is done when he breaks and hinders every evil plan and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature, which do not want us to hallow God's name or let his kingdom come. And when he strengthens and keeps us firm in his word and faith until we die, this is his good and gracious will. We pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again that you continue to cast your seed upon the ground and that you cause the ground to be changed to produce fruit. Thank you, Father, for giving your word to us. Thank you, Father, for your law and your gospel that show us our sin and then show us even more clearly what Jesus did for our sin. Help us to live in that joy each and every day. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thanks for joining me today, dear saints. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Go in his peace.